I may not be able to farm any new solo leveling videos anymore, but it's okay because we have Mushoku Tensei and Slime for this season. We got episode two of season two, part two, episode one, cut content. Let's go. Season two, part two starts right where we left it. Okay. Rudy had just been cured of his impotence and his proposal to selfie meant impotence. marriage was right around the corner for him. What this means for some of you, though, is that as much as you don't want to admit it, you're pretty much watching a romance slice of life right now. It's a point in- It's true. Part 1 of Season 2 is just straight up fucking... It's, it's just fantasy high school. It's, it's native isekai rom-com in a high school setting, bro. I understand they're not high school students, but like, goddamn, that shit was so slice of life. Like, nothing... There's a lot of setup. There's, there was a lot of revelations, too. But... Again, I go back to the point that Mushoku Tensei is so good that they, they can de dedicate an entire fucking, you know, half of a season towards this slice of life, like, rom-com, erectile dysfunction arc. And still, people are praising this. Obviously, there's a lot of people upset, too. In Rudy's life where things are relatively peaceful, and his main focus is to support Selfie whatever way he can. It's too peaceful. There was a bit left out with regards to how Rudy approached his current situation with Paul, but as far as cut content goes, the majority of it's relevant to the wedding and house. I mean, there was an entire section of the novel dedicated to its renovation, part of which included a complete repurposing of the secret room in the basement. So, as we take a look at that and the deeper mystery behind the original owner of the house, perhaps you'll find there was more to this episode than just Rudy's home life. Really? Let's get started. Like what? Episode ad time. 37. No ad? My Dream Home. Covering chapters 1 to 4 from volume 10 of the light novel. It was only once a month that Rudy and the others- Dude, the light novel art? The light novel art makes the Rudy look so much better. Holy shit, the designs are totally different. The designs, it's, it's not so distant, but like, goddamn, a light novel Rudy anime, they, they look like more shoujo fied, if that makes sense. The light novel. It was only once a month that Rudy and the others ever had to go to homeroom, and it just so happened that the day he was cured was the day before said homeroom. So, with a strut in his step and a weight lifted off his shoulders, Rudy would attend bearing a scent so incredibly strong that Linnea and Persena would actually have heat. to plug their noses from it. He's in heat. We only saw the first part of their deliberation after, since in the novels the two went on into a serious discussion on who would become the boss's woman. It was a conversation Rudy initially thought they would both become the boss's woman a harem, or if it's like animal tribe people, wouldn't they have to like fight? to see who gets Rudy, right? Because it's like, might is right in the, the kingdom of furries. They were having just to make fun of him, but after Persena stepped up as the one to take one for the team, Rudy knew he needed to put an end to it. Still, Persena would go and sit unusually close to him, and Lenia would stay far away as if- Remember this? <laughs> People were so upset about this episode, bro. <laughs> I remember this. Chibi had to make a whole fucking video because of Twitter people, you know, getting angry at this scene. Her way as if to keep herself guarded. It was a weird sight since the two were acting completely opposite from how they usually did. In any case, it was once Rudy revealed that he'd finally been cured that every- What the fuck is this art? Is this manga? This is not light novel, right? Rudy looks so different all of a sudden because the light novel cover art was so different. This is the manga art. The manga art is also so different. One would stand up, clap their hands, and say congratulations to him. Isn't the that was so Evangelion meme? Peculiar yet congratulations. Peculiar Rudy couldn't help but relate it to the last episode of a certain TV anime. Uh, the there it is. Word congratulations. Word certain points towards Evangelion. That wasn't the only reference that should have been made this episode, though, since a couple more were made during his conversation with Nanahoshi. Before we get to that though, it was while on his way to her that even Vice Principal Genius would take note of Rudy's new demeanor. He would inquire as to why- Yo, it we haven't stole the fucking president, sorry, the actual principal yet. And the principal is like a- I remember watching any news videos from last season. There was like a principal who's like kind of short, but he's like some kind of like wind god. No, it's probably not the right title, but like- they still haven't shown that guy, only the Vice Principal. I wonder why. The, pr the principal was actually kind of important in part one too. Is Rudy seemed so different, and Rudy would respond by saying My a three-year problem works. had finally resolved itself. Three years? Holy shit. I guess it has been three. Three years without a functioning dick. Holy fuck. This made Genius ask whether Rudy would continue to stay at the university, since the whole reason he'd even enrolled here was to find a cure for his impotence. With that now done and his personal mission complete, though, Rudy thought perhaps now was a good time Bro went to the fucking Magic Academy to fix his dick and now he has no reason to stay so he'll leave. Uh, it's more than that. But... I guess... 
it really was all about that. Th that was the focus. It was not even a side quest. That straight up was the main focus. Time to finally head to the Begarit continent. It was, after all, the place where his family was. It was when he considered everything he'd be leaving behind, though, that Rudy began to hesitate since so much had happened in the past year. He'd reunited with Xanaba and adopted Julie, bonded with Clip and befriended the two Beast Girls, then yeah. even met someone who was easily nah, nah, like him. Don't forget about Body Gotti! Silthy was of course what mattered most to him, but she probably wasn't the reason the Man God sent him here. If he had to guess. Man God sent him here. Most likely to either um, ally with the princess to overtake the Asura kingdom. I don't know how this would help the man god, but basically the man god keeps making Rudy go in places where it's kind of beneficial towards him too. Rudy gets some power-ups, right? Rudy does get some power-ups and it is usually helpful, but at the end of the day, it is in the man god's best interest to send Rudy out like that. So either it's just simply to make an alliance with the princess, or there's the Nanahoshi teleportation things that the man god wants Rudy to know and figure out. I don't know. Rudy believed it was also he could meet Nanahoshi. Yeah. He felt their meeting was more than just coincidence. That being the case, there was probably something important he was meant to find out with her. Teleportation? It be the, the rules? He'd stay here at the university, though, since wherever Sylphie was, that's where he would go. This was the decision Rudy decided to follow through with. That didn't mean he'd go running to Asura if Sylphie did too, but it was certainly a possibility should the right circumstances be met. Like, one of the core reasons he didn't feel comfortable going anywhere was simply due to the fact that Paul hadn't yet responded to him. Uh oh. Until he got confirmation of the way things were on his end, Rudy would wait at the university just in case. To go anywhere else would mean he would miss Paul. Did we get that confirmation? I forget how that letter went. In the anime. Did we get it? Or is Annie News talking in the, from the context of Rudy from in the, in the middle of season 2? Hold up. Did, did Paul respond? So we're stuck here? Because we're waiting for a confirmation from Paul, but I don't remember the exact details of if we got a confirmation from Paul. Do you guys remember? Paul's reply and that could be he responded. If okay, 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 okay. So until he could touch base with Paul, Rudy was set to continue being a student. Now it was during his conversation with Nanahoshi that the generational gap between them would be made apparent, specifically through the use of manga and anime references. What I mean is that since the two never really had much to talk about, right. Because, like, Nanahoshi was, like, a high school teenage, teenager, right? Yes. And she was, like, talking to her crush or whatever when Rudy, like, died near that gas station that Nanahoshi was in front. And Rudy was already, like, what, in his 30s then? So there is, I guess, it is, like, a millennial and, like, a Gen Z kind of difference, yeah. It was in the times they did that Rudy would try to find some middle ground. He would try to take advantage of their shared passion for manga and light novels. It was when he made a reference to Sailor Moon, though, that the blank stare he was met with highlighted their age gap. <laughs> then I was, she was like, Sailor Moon? Fucking boomer, I'm watching gushing over a magical girl nowadays with Sailor Moon? Y'all, y'all, you're a fucking boomer! You see, not only did Nanahoshi have no idea what Sailor Moon was, but the follow-up reference involving Dragon Ball was something she'd Dragon never Ball. heard of. She had heard of that one, okay. Well, I mean, Dragon Ball is so huge that uh, she should be able to know about this one. This was pretty surprising from a self-proclaimed avid reader, but when you consider how she was 17 and him 34, yeah. it was only Double the, age. the series they've read to be complete. Wait, 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 what are, what are these series? How she was 17 and him 34, it was only yeah. natural yeah. the series. Uh, Death Note, we haven't seen that, but one of these days maybe. The ReZero, soon, we're gonna start ReZero very soon. Read to be complete. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, Berserk, a beautiful manga anime apparently shit. Different. There was a complete gap in their ages that made conversation incredibly difficult. A generational difference that was only further accentuated by the 10 year gap between her arrival and his. Right. That, so it's, it's, it's not just like a 17 year old gap, right? There's that 10 additional years until Nanahoshi arrives. So it's, that's even a bigger gap. This okay. was why Rudy just blurted out the question about dating, since with nothing else to talk about, it was the only thing he could say. <laughs> she fucked now, up that circle. One of the things Rudy thought about when recounting the quarrel with... There it is, right? Wonder who the crush is. Who knows? Nanahoshi was the potential of her running some sort of reverse harem, and the high likelihood that the two she was with were isekai as well. Ha! Wait! Not just her. These other kids could have been isekais. What other isekai? We haven't met them yet. There's no hint as to who they could be just yet, right? 
the lack of rumors made such a chance equally unlikely, but then again, to survive without mana would be, well, difficult. Unless you were lucky like how Nanahoshi was, to be thrown into this world with no support and no mana was essentially a death sentence. It was a thought that Rudy quickly realized Nanahoshi must go through daily. Right, because again, if they're transported here, they have, like, if they're just summoned here, right, in their old bodies, Nanahoshi doesn't age anymore, but, like, she can't have mana, so she uses different uh, rings, different, like, <laughs> chakra crystals, I don't different gear to use kind of magical things, while Rudy was actually born here, and then in the theory in Mushoku Tensei is that you're not born with that mana, but the younger you are and the more uh, you train your magic, the mana pool can actually grow. It's like a near plasticity thing, like kids can learn a new language earlier. It's not like they were, some of them are talented, but it's like the mana pool, earlier you get on it, the bigger it can become. That's why Sophie is also so cracked, right? Moving on to the cafeteria now. Despite Rudy being excited for his upcoming marriage, he still wasn't sure if it was appropriate considering the current situation with his family. That didn't really bother him too much though, since whenever it did, he would just think about all the amazing things getting married came with. So, in actuality, the only real problem was the method in which marriages happened here. He'd what? never seen one himself, and since the one for Paul and Lilia was just a massive party, he couldn't say for sure- There was one? I forget in season 1. So this is after- uh, Zenith found out that Paul is fucking Lily and, there's a, and Lily got pregnant. They celebrated, huh? I, I forget. That, that was so long time ago. If we did a re-reaction, I would remember, but <laughs> that was such an awkward revelation. Like, Paul, are you fucking serious? You fucked a maid? Who made the move first? Most likely Paul. Or what even went into the ceremonial part of a marriage. In fact, Rudy wasn't even sure if people had one here. So, Rudy would go and ask both Xanaba and Cliff, but in addition to neither mentioning a ceremony whatsoever, both would also give wildly different answers dependent to their culture. In Shirane, the man had to send gifts to the family of the bride, while in Millis, the bride was given a dowry to provide to her husband. Oh, how much was a dowry? The bride was to give a... Wait, 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 wait. In addition to neither mentioning a ceremony whatsoever, both would also give wildly different answers dependent to their culture. Okay. In Shirane, the man had to send gifts to the family of the bride, while... So, this is Xanaba's kingdom. The man gives gifts to the family, the bride. We have to give something to Sylphie. In Millis, the bride was given a dowry to... And in, you know, Cliff's place, Millis, which is a really religious holy place, right? Property or money brought by a bride to her husband on their marriage. So, the girl gives the guy a shitload of money. Or, or, or a gift that is, like, shitload of money. Provide to her husband. I, 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 you know what? I think I like the way that Millis does it, man. Why do I gotta give the fucking gift? Let, let, the, let the girl give a gift to me, bro. Come on. Why, why can't I get some, bro? Both emphasized a strong connection between the families, but neither had any particular time. Oh my god, mother. <laughs> Mom's dead, right? Is it confirmed that mom is dead? I don't remember. Grandfather is dead. Was it confirmed that the mom is also dead? Fuck me, dude. Ah, she's so hot, though. No! And what's the um, what's the dad's name? Was his name Jeff or some shit? He's also dead, right? He's the one that kind of like asked Rudy. He's like, "Hey, yo, Rudy, you you wanna like? That's just like a joke or something, but you wanna start a coup? You you want you want you, you wanna start a fucking revolt here? Just just asking. Just to, I I know you're just like a seven year old kid right now, but like, hey, you wanna get in on this? And it's like, okay, fine, bye bye. Type of event behind it. Even Xanaba, who'd already been married and divorced, couldn't provide insight other than the house stuff. Who the fuck did he marry? The fuck? Cliff also couldn't provide insight into Elvish customs, since in addition to Alina Lise not being the most, well, traditional. Come on, let it- it's, she, she gonna die if she don't get these back shots, man. Come on, leave her alone. He had also promised the two wouldn't get married until he cured her. So, the most either could offer was financial assistance from Xanaba's side. He was more than capable of buying any house no matter how big and was happy to do so should Rudy request it. So him. rich, bro. Of course, Rudy didn't want to accept, but considering he had no idea what the current housing market was like, he decided to keep the option as a backup just in case. Fast forward to when he's actually looking at houses, and the place he was at was pretty much a real estate agency. Technically, it's referred to as the Land Management Office, but since their main purpose was the purchase and sale LMO. of vacant property, along with the occasional permit grants for empty plot builds, it made sense to just consider them the real estate agency. Normally, such tasks were handled by the region's liege lord, but with Sharia not having a regional lord at all, the duty was instead handled by the Magician's Guild and three magic nations. 
They had worked together to create the land management office and established it as its own independent group okay. capable of distributing land without the real estate system this in Mushoku Tensei. He was dealing with, and it was here he would come across all sorts of homes he definitely couldn't afford right now. Sure, he could get a decent house or a relatively nice apartment, but anything posh was way out of the budget for him. Relatable. Asking Sylphie was something we saw him consider too, but if he wanted to look dependent and fulfill his duty as the man, Rudy felt he needed to do this alone. That's when he saw the cursed manor at the bottom of the listings, and the entire backstory for that was given by the real estate agent. This so house is actually so fucked up. We already know who went in and who got murdered, but if you're wondering why the Adventurer's Guild stopped trying to cleanse it, the main reason was because the quest for it was stuck at the E-Rank. It was definitely far more dangerous than the E-Rank, but with not enough funds to raise the quest's rank it's beyond just not that, worth it. the land management office found they couldn't make an enticing enough offer for anyone. I forgot this. This is dead end. <laughs> we had an entire fucking separate outfit, dude. To take it. Especially since there was a bit of discord between them and the Adventurer's Guild. Rudy would then ask if he could get it for free if he cleansed it himself, but the moment he did, the agent just looked at him as if he was crazy. He would then sign a provisional contract instead and list Ariel and Bodyguardi as the guarantors for it. It was as soon as Do the they agent know? saw whose names were on the paper that he would immediately stand up and go get his manager. I mean... Bro, what do you, you write down the fucking, one, one of the most important princesses of the Asura Kingdom, and you put down fucking body Gaudi. what is he? He's the demon, not emperor, emperor is the, the lolly girl, demon king, I think he's a demon king, right? There's king, emperor, and then is there a sage, or is it just god after, I forget. Rudy couldn't be certain which of these names was getting him the special treatment, but it was clear one of them for sure made him someone important. Enough that in the subsequent negotiation with the manager, Rudy was able to bring the asking price down by half. Oh, this brings us now art to of the deal. Investigation, and despite the building being over 100 years old, it looks surprisingly well maintained given how long it's been abandoned for. It made Rudy think perhaps some kind of mana was infused into it, perhaps a type of mana which protected it from decay. Really? This wasn't far-fetched considering that literally anything could be infused with mana, but as we find out later, a lot of the house's good condition was attributed to the doll. In any case, the three would investigate using a formation Rudy came up with himself. Xanabo would stick in front and be their tank, Cliff the middle since he was the most important, and Rudy the back as the tactician and DPS specialist. Cliff was the most important, huh? Wow. Specialist. The reason I say Cliff is the most yeah, important why? is because it was only natural to protect the healer. Sure, he could provide a bit of divine effect. Oh, he's a healer? He he is mil I never really thought about like what Cliff's magic really is. But he like specializes on healing. Offensive magic too, but what mattered most was keeping him safe as their support. Okay, he's Zanaba's mostly support. He can do offense, but mostly support. Himself, since as Zanaba himself once said, normal weapons were simply too fragile. So, oh, I was like, yo, who got Zanaba the new fucking club? But Rudy made it so that it won't break. Himself, since as okay. Zanaba himself once said, normal weapons were simply too fragile. What I mean is that his superhuman strength always made him break them. <laughs> this would mean replacing them would become quite expensive, so rather than do that, Rudy simply made his own for him. As for Cliff, his nervous demeanor reminded Rudy he had actually just come back from an adventure. One that he was genuinely curious to hear all about. Just in case you don't remember though, it was back towards the end of season two Where they go? that Cliff would go adventuring with Alina Lise and the S rank party stepped leader. Cliff wasn't so excited to tell him about it though, since apparently the entire time they just ripped into him. <laughs> it was an awful experience Rudy was sure wasn't that bad, but Cliff didn't get cooked during the adventure, right? There there there's no way Cliff would be getting cooked and people are bullying him and everyone else is just taking turns on Erina Lise, right? This is not that kind of story, right? For someone like Cliff, it probably was. As a person who constantly proclaims themselves a genius, to be constantly criticized was probably quite the shock okay, to him. They're just criticizing it's him, right? he didn't know okay. how to handle such an intense and hostile environment. Now, there wasn't anything peculiar during the investigation in the anime, but- I actually used to hate this guy in the OVA, but now- the moment he met Edina Rizzo, now I just kind of pity him. It's kind of sad. Not not sad that, like, he's getting... I'm, I'm not saying that, like, Cliff being bound to Edina Rizzo is sad. I'm saying, like, actions like this. I used to, like, look down on him and be like, oh, this kid needs to learn his lesson. But it's like, oh, no, stop bullying this kid. I feel bad. 
What Rudy found odd in the novels was the way the fireplace was set up. He couldn't pinpoint what it was that made it seem so weird, but there was definitely something about it which made it special. Rudy would then have Cliff investigate it for any magical markings, and sure enough there was a magic circle imprinted right on the inside of it. He didn't know what exactly that magic circle did, but a good assumption was that it helped to heat the entire house. You see, if this fireplace truly was a magical implement like how Rudy thought it was, then it probably served as a furnace bringing heat to all the rooms. It would be a significant stroke of luck if so since a tool like that was extremely expensive. The next rooms didn't have anything as peculiar as that, but Rudy did get caught up imagining how Sylphie would be in each of them. In fact, the more he saw, the more his imagination ran. <laughs> they should have included these, but if they did that, it would have broken. It would have broke the suspense of the like the almost like haunted house feel. Wild at all the possibilities of what their home life would be like. Look so at her ears altogether, flapping. Altogether, the main floor had two kitchens, two large rooms, four small rooms, and two toilets, making it seem like the entire thing was two houses connected into one. With the upper floor being two symmetrical wings connected to one massive bedroom. It really was more than enough for whatever fantasies Rudy envisioned for himself, of which there were certainly many. Now. Looks at bed. Then fantasies. What are you hinting at here, Annie News? Hmm? Hmm? Many. Now, it was as Cliff worried for Elena Lise and Zanaba Julie that Rudy too would wonder if Sylphie was waiting up for him. He did mention how he was going out, but not once did he say he was spending the night. This made him worry that Sylphie was waiting outside his room for him to get back, and that in turn made him want to run back to the university and leave a note for her. Aww. With the sun setting and night almost here though, by the time he did and got back, there was a chance Sanaba and Cliff would have gotten themselves killed. He was after all the leader of their party, and if anything happened to them, it would be his fault. This- Could Sanaba die? I don't know. Cliff maybe, but Xanaba, we saw how durable he is. Z he almost seems like fucking indestructible. If we shot one of those drill things, remember the attack that we shot to Bodyguardi and Orsted? If we shot that at Xanaba, what would happen? He says his like, skin is fucking like steel. I don't know. I want to do a little test round. Come on, play it. If anything happened to them, it would be his fault. This made him reconsider the severity of leaving Sylphie in the dark, but at the same time led to what he knew was a dangerous mentality. What I mean is that if he justified the situation by saying it was only just this once, then who's to say how many more just this once's would come after it? It was a slippery slope that tended to accumulate, and one he knew would ultimately lead to a rift between them. This was something he really wanted to avoid, so the only solution he could come up with was to raise his own death flag. Thus the reason why he I might made die. this statement here to Xanaba. It wasn't something that was explained in the anime, but the- Yeah, yeah, once we finish this job, I'm gonna get married, like, death flight. And then Sylphie was- Rudy, that was for fun. Sylphie, though. Sylphie after? Bro, that shit was fucked up. Oh, you'll never leave me again out of nowhere, right? It's like, stop, stop saying that. Why are you saying this? The only reason he said it was to force a trope on himself. A death flag he instantly regretted the moment he raised it. In fact, with the Careful. way Sanaba responded and the way he reacted, Rudy felt if he took it any further, he wouldn't even make it to his wedding. Careful. His death flag would have been so ridiculous Careful. that he wouldn't have been surprised if a bullet came out of nowhere and killed him right here. It was all a funny bit of subtext that made this conversation a bit more light. The investigation at night proceeded pretty much as we saw, but if you're wondering why it is Rudy's stone cannon didn't affect it, the main reason hmm. is because he had weakened it. He knew anything stronger would damage the house, and out of concern uh, for doing damage okay, okay, which okay. couldn't be repaired... Rudy yeah, I was like, how the fuck did he survive that drill thing? But it's like different degrees of magnitude and strength, right? This thing was shot to body god, he had a lot of fucking spin, but it's like, we gotta be kind of careful in the house. Rudy weakened his projectiles right at the last moment, resulting in the attack only staggering the doll. Now, we saw Rudy's applications for it reach all the way to silicone, but what he didn't mention were the others in between all that. Like, he knew inanimate objects such as armor could move the same way that Whoa, this doll did, but if that could also- Who is this guy? The fuck? Yo, this guy looks fucking sick. I don't recognize him from any of the enemies we're watching right now, though. Armor ...could move the same way that this doll did, but if that could also be applied to his own stone figures too, then the possibilities- <laughs> Ghislaine. Of truly were endless. Moving figurines. Imbue mana onto a Ghislaine and... 
Roxy figurines so they start moving around. Make them life-sized. Make them life-sized animated. Now we're thinking. Now we're th I think that's what Zana was going for, bro. It was you know when it. Rudy discovered I know it. The book in the Everyone After knows it. This, that something about it just seemed super familiar. You see, from some memory or the other, both the crest and script were something he knew he'd seen before. The fact the text was one he couldn't read, though, indicated the language it was written in was either Sea God Tongue or Sky God Tongue. Sea God. That or a completely different language he'd never even seen before. Whatever it was that was being researched here, though, was clearly forbidden and abruptly halted. I wonder who it was, was doing it. It was the only explanation for the routine that- We don't even know who was doing it, because the person that was doing it got killed by the doll, right? Doll seemed to be taking every night. Rudy figured it was the magical implement responsible for keeping the house in the condition it was in. As for who it was who made it, well, there were a whole They're number dead, right? of reasons for why they just suddenly up and vanished one day. The only thing Rudy knew for sure was that whatever it was, it was enough to cause them to leave their work behind. No, they're not dead. Okay, I assume that the doll killed it. I don't know why. Okay, so there's a possibility that they are alive, whoever that was doing this. We need to meet that person. Somebody that's so... Like, their, their line of work is exactly... You know, it aligns with ours. I mean, we kind of want to just do more degenerate shit, but maybe the other person is also a mad scientist and is actually trying to make a, the first sex doll ever. There's a bit more to who this potential person could be, and that comes with two weeks of cut content revolving around the house's renovations. Two weeks a of few cut content? Were taken to ensure no other robots were left, then a skilled dwarven craftsman was hired to make everything presentable. Of course he it's a dwarf. He was a 30-year veteran that went by the name of Balda the Hammer. <laughs> Ain't no way his name is fucking Balda. Balda the Bald. Balda the Receding. Balda the hammer, okay, there's a dwarf craftsman that was behind the doll. A friend of Talhand whose achievements were known across the continents. Okay. He was introduced to Rudy through Alina Lise, and the two would take on- Oh, that's that guy! Whoa, 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 that is the exact dwarf! That was Nerina Lise in, in Roxy's party. We know this guy, right? He was straight up- Am I crazy? There was a dwarf in Roxy's party, and this is the same dwarf, I think? And the two would take on this project of turning this ruin into a proper different domicile. dwarf, different dwarf, separate dwarf. Okay, he just happens to be using the same dwarf picture from I don't even know if this guy's from Mushoku Tensei, but I do remember a dwarf in the Roxy's party, but it is not that dwarf. Alina Lise, okay. and the two would take on this project of turning this ruin into a proper domicile. As it turns out, the whole thing was just a three part process consisting of the door, washing area, and basement. The rest were just a bunch of touch-ups that didn't require much work at all. One of the op- Yeah, just little touch-ups. Just, just minor touch-ups that doesn't require work at all, guys. Didn't require much work at all. Yeah, for sure. One of the observations Balda had made about the house in general, though, was that aside from the floors, everything else was made rather poorly. From what he could tell during the brief tour Rudy had given him, it was as if the house was made solely to hide the basement. To him, the basement was the part crafted the best, then everything else was clearly just extra. It's basically a meth lab. It's the crack house. It, the, the rest of the house doesn't fucking matter. It's just the basement for the meth lab. Got it, got it. A quick construction project only done as an afterthought. Fortunately, the stairs, kitchen, dining area, and fireplace were all solid work too, but whatever talented builder worked to create all that clearly didn't do anything to assist with the renovations of the walls and ceiling. It was evident that this was where construction went haywire. This is where things start to get a bit more interesting since, upon closer inspection, Balda was able to spot a crest of sorts. Mm -hmm. You see, right on the fireplace which Rudy discovered was a magical implement was a similar emblem to the one he found on the book down in the basement. That crest somehow leads to the person who made it? Balda recognized it as the mark of a genius craftsman, but unfortunately the name it? of said craftsman was supposedly lost to time. What? That said, any magical implement which bore his- So it's just like an unknown artisan crafter. And he's represented by this. No one really knows any more of the past, but anything that has this insignia, you know it's really good. This crest was always sold for a lot since they were the best on the market. Gotcha. This was another stroke of luck. What a legacy. Since an implement this big was incredibly rare. More importantly than that though, was the fact that these implements were here meant that the original owner of the house likely built them here making it probable he was the same person as that genius craftsman. I'm not sure. And now, we're gonna be making 
baby making action. We're going to be making love. We're going to be slapping. We're going to be clapping Sophie's cheeks in the same home as that legendary craftsman. He would be so proud of us, guys. Sure, if any of this information. Actually, he would not be. Because he seems to, he, he probably thinks 2D is better than 3D. Because he's trying to make, no, because he made the dolls. That's also 3D, even though this is a 2D anime. My point is, he probably would want to fuck figurines instead of real living flesh. Well, but he would be disappointed. Important later, but what is is what Rudy decided to do with the basement. We don't know for sure what it is he decided to do, but it was strange enough to get quite the comment from Balda. Something about Rudy clearly not being a follower of Millis. Balda, something about clearly not being... Of course we're not a follower of Millis. Why are you wanting such a strange... I forget it. I'm sure... I'm a good follower of Millis, but looks like you sure aren't. Fucking... Elitist church people, bro! Machinery and materials were then brought in after, and the secret room in the basement was finally transformed. This would... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This... This... What, 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 what was this? So, this is the sanctuary... This is our shrine. We put... This is Roxy's panties, but this extra box is selfies. What's in the box? Is, is this selfies? What did he take here? Did he cut out the fucking fabric that was stained by not wine, but most likely blood when Sophie and Rudy, you know, made love once? So he kept that, you know, the, the bloodied cloth in here to, to remember the first time that she, she lost the... There's no way, right? No! No! I was just trying to sound creepy. I was straight up just trying, trying to sound creepy. They got the, the hardcore Mushoku Tensei, you know, haters don't really pay attention to details like that. Could you imagine if they fucking, like, you know, heard, heard this and there was a hole? Oh my god, there was a fucking hole. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's, it's, it's love. God, it's love, guys. It's love, but that's quite, that's crazy. That, that's crazy. Take, taking the fucking bloodstained fabric of the first time you took Sophie's virgin <laughs> as a fucking... Putting it into the shrine Ooh, nearby the panties of another person, by the way. Nearby the panties of another person named Roxy. <laughs> this shrine? This shrine is fucking cursed. What else are we gonna put in there, bro? Roxy's hair isn't in there, though, right? Roxy's hair. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. Eris's hair. We threw that shit out, right? We, we, he didn't do that with Eris because she, she left the fucking trauma. But, like, I don't know. When, when Eris comes back, maybe, I don't know. Maybe he'll put something else in there, bro. Transformed. This would be the last thing before Rudy would finally bring Silky. Crazy. That brings us now to the end of the episode. So, yeah. That's pretty much everything you missed from this Scooby Doo episode. All right. If you're pumped for the return of Mushoku Tensei, then be sure to leave a like and let me know down in the comments. Y'all know what to do. Please go to Mr. Annie's channel. Click that link. Like his video. Sub to his channel if you haven't. He always gives us such great breakdowns. I know that the first episode was kind of a snooze fest, Scooby Doo ass episode, right? But, you know, we're taking this little slow, slow ramp up period. And, <laughs> period, blood, blood, selfies, blood, cloth, ew.